looks like it's working now so now all that is left to fix the sound if there are any problems with sound uh, yeah you can you can say whatever I mean we're live now but uh, you can say whatever just yeah uh, I'm just checking the, the website yeah it's like it's working now okay so i'll have to now I'll lower the vo volume here so we don't get an echo okay i'll have to oh, I, I also did a test uh, twitch uh test twitch uh, uh, stream as well that's going parallel with this one i mean it's the same stream but on different platform just to check if it's working as it should and uh, the only thing that I think it's not working is the YouTube. Yeah. We'll have to fix that. Uh, but never mind. So, like, we're live in one minute. Yeah. We'll have to fix that. Okay, echo. Embed. Oh no, it looks like it's working. Great. Okay, then we have a good setup. Uh, okay, Mark, welcome. Uh, hey, we are live. I think so. I think we are. Uh, no, it still shows me that this event hasn't started yet. Uh, you just have to press play, I think. Is is there a play button? Mm, no. No. You're looking at that page that I sent link to. Yeah. Huh? Just let me check. Okay. Oh. I think uh, it should work. I I'll do something. Uh, I'll make a transition. So let's see. And let me let me know if you see anything in ten to fifty sec fifteen seconds. Uh, but I think it should work. Do you see it? Do you see the change? One second. Still shows that this event hasn't started yet. Oh, where do you, where are, where are we looking this on on the on the ifccacademy.com slash ifcc live? Yeah. Okay. It's I think it's actually it's working on on YouTube. Yeah, but I think that you just have to refresh the page or something. Okay. It's okay. I guess it's because I see it here on, at least on this one. I actually, uh, I, I see it yeah. everywhere actually. So it's live. The guy says, okay. Arthur Theodorzik says it's live. Okay, so, so hi everybody. Yeah, hi everybody. Bye. Today we have the amazing Marek Made from Poland. Am I right? I'm right. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. I'm from Poland. <laughs> okay. Uh, the senior concept artist at uh, CD Project Red for uh, how long now? Uh, yeah, it's been uh, like eight years now. Eight like, years. Wow. Yeah, I, I started uh, when the company was just finishing the uh, Witcher Two uh -huh. on on Xbox uh, 360, and I was there like through all of the development of the. Uh, Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt, and then both of the expansion packs. I worked also on the Gwent 
-hmm. at the beginning of the project, which is like recently was released on the the mobiles, which is like pretty mm -hmm. cool. Like, should happen like way before, and then now I'm working for a recent years on uh, on Cyberpunk. Uh huh. So it's like for the last two years, right? Or or one year? Uh, like... even longer. Three years. Yeah. Uh, like I, I don't even know if I can share how long I am actually okay. working on the, the project. But, uh, yet, if, we, uh, if we compare it to the previous big project, uh, this is quite larger, right? Yeah, it's like the project with like every every project that uh, was released, like it's growing uh, as a company and also like uh, the audience also growing. Like there was like a huge amount of fans of the the Witcher games before the release of the Witcher 3 but mm -hmm. Witcher 3 like just changed the game totally and uh, we felt a lot of pressure when it was like releasing the Witcher 3 and now uh, the, the pressure regarding like cyberpunk it's like even higher uh, and you know we, we are trying our best but uh, you're always kind of scared that you're gonna like fucked up and people are gonna not like it the way you would want it i i've noticed that uh even even uh companies uh event uh, the promised land was postponed because of the because you needed all the muscle for the for the game so yes that's that the problem of fact that uh, the, the event is organized by people from the studio mm -hmm. so and uh it's me and the uh, uh, my art director Pavel Milnyshuk and also like Sebastian Kalemba, which like uh, those people are like needed in the development uh, a lot. Like they uh, they have like a lot of deficit of time during the the project and dividing their time uh, towards like different things to do like would be really problematic. And uh, making games is hard. And then like you need to focus on the on the project to work on it uh like your full energy and uh, and also like organizing event like ifcc or promised land also like takes a lot of energy so uh if you want to have like also life uh it's, sometimes you need to decide what you want to like focus on yeah uh so like Eight years ago, when you got hired by uh, the company, uh, in the meantime, I suppose the company is, has grown a, a lot. Uh, do you think uh, you could get a job with the skills that you offered back then? Would you, will you be able to get a job today? Uh, yeah, pro probably not. That's the that's the thing. And also, like you, you know, uh, the problem is that I was hired in a totally different moments, and then uh, I don't even. Like when people are asking me how to get the job at City Project, like the uh, the thing is that it's totally different company now. And then uh, I didn't actually go through the recruitment process mm -hmm. uh, that's happening now, uh, and it's probably a bit different. And also, like the the project that we are working on is uh, different. So, uh, and the the needs for the projects are different. Uh, so I don't necessarily know. Uh, if my advice is that I'm giving people are actually legit, like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that like they're helpful because mm -hmm. like uh, I'm, I'm giving them from the perspective of a person that's like already working in the mm -hmm. studio and like what would be like helpful in the team. But the uh, recruitment process is like, uh, you, that's the thing. It's like when you are trying to get a job, it's like there is a, like skills are like one thing, but uh, a lot of, uh the impact on if you're gonna get the job or not it's also like luck or like sometimes your personality as well like how you're gonna like resonate with people that are actually recruiting you mm -hmm. uh sometimes even like small details like how you organize your portfolio might might, might uh, get a lot of uh impact because uh re recruiters in the studio they are actually going through like hundreds of emails and then mm -hmm. they are not uh, like they are like doing the, the the first filtering how, of the portfolios. How many recruiters are there in the company? Uh, if you can say that, I, like 
It's uh, like I don't necessarily remember now because you know, like I I don't have too much with recruitment uh, department, uh, but like it's a bunch of people. Like it's uh, probably less than ten people, but mm -hmm. like it's still like a pretty big number of uh, people. And then then they are res usually responsible uh, for recruiting people towards specific departments. Like all of those people have like a couple of departments that they are mm -hmm. taking care of. Uh, and then they, they are like filtering the first uh, emails and portfolios and then if they think that's like uh, they were kind of like uh, obviously they are not artists so like they can't maybe mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know look at the portfolios in professional way but they kind of know what what source like searching but th because of that it's also like there is a lot of uh, space for not letting through some portfolios that actually would be fitting to towards the job. Mm -hmm. so, and I mean, then the, the thing is, like, like when I was talking with other people in the, the studios, they, it's something like that is happening in the different studios as well. So, uh, it, but you know, like, uh, like, that's why, for example, it's good to actually get the first contact on events like IFCC, for example, or mm -hmm. like Promised Land, because then. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have like direct contact with somebody in the studio. It's mm -hmm. like it's not always like the, the the best option to actually go directly to our director and trying to get his email and send him uh, your portfolio because he might not have the the time to actually do that as well. But uh, any kind of contact inside a studio is usually help helpful when you are actually trying to get a job. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean. For those who have never maybe worked in a in a studio or have started their own, uh, where, I mean smaller studio, especially in the in the studios, you know, like you have probably two programmers there, two or three artists, or even <laughs> or even a whole team are both artists and programmers, and and in something as huge as CD project. Uh, red is there's like probably you know if, if there are like 200 people who are doing guard then there are also like a similar number or a bit smaller number of people who are doing totally different tasks uh, uh, which is not related to art or, or programming but just like to maintaining the company uh, so uh, this could be uh, you know people who are you know doing uh, uh, bills and all this kind of stuff, uh, taking care of the payments and and, and whatnot. So, uh, do you even know everyone from from the from the company? I know that uh, you're, like, you're like on two locations or three. Yeah, it's more like when I was joining, it was like around like 100 people, and then the concept art team, for example, was was uh, me, two other concept artists, and uh, and lead concept artists and that was the whole team that was like like that for like a uh, quite a while mm -hmm. and nowadays for cyberpunk we have like uh, around like 30 people now uh, mm -hmm. now like nowadays we are like divided to to different departments like environment art and then uh, like character art and then there are different locations we have like mm -hmm. studio in uh, krakow and in rotswaf mm -hmm. uh, and then there are also like a uh, companies that are helping us like i'm not like there is one studio like uh, that's in some like in la i think but uh, it's more like uh, marketing yeah, okay. yeah it's more more for like marketing and that, that kind of business uh yeah so like the development studios are like like just in poland mm -hmm. uh, i think we also have like some uh, studio in in china because uh china was like a big market for uh quent Mm -hmm. uh, but also like, that, like, like the whole studio now is like over like 1000 people like so mm -hmm. obviously i don't know of course most yeah. of the people like sometimes like even going to the kitchen is there like you see uh faces that you never saw before and then mm -hmm. that's kind of weird like not necessarily like not everybody will like like that kind of uh uh environment like for me i think uh, i i much preferred working in the studio with when it was smaller mm -hmm. uh but in general like i i, I enjoy working at cd project and uh, if i would not i would not 
stay there for for so long. Uh, obviously, like projects are also like big factors. Uh, uh, like. I, I love playing uh, role playing games and I, I couldn't imagine like a uh, better place to work on. Uh... Uh, so, I mean, you, you, you and I have met uh, a lot of times because uh, you were at the IFCC, I think, at least three times, am I right? Mm. I, I say a lot of times because it lasts for six days so you know like yeah, yeah. I meet you six times every every year so but yeah. uh, we actually never have time to talk t about this kind of stuff or so it's also yeah it's, this you know like you are you are busy regarding the, yeah, I'm just the running event. so probably the same when the when the promised land is uh, at your place uh, yeah, yeah yeah pretty pretty much same for like, you. Um, uh, so uh, uh, what I wanted to ask you is uh, from from your perspective uh, uh, I mean the be, because from my perspective it seems that your company is something like it's not this is not the US company it, it's a European company uh, from Poland and uh, from what I, we hear uh, it's it's almost uh, as a national Bright, you know, <laughs> I mean, uh, such yeah, a huge yeah. company it's, it, that's uh, literally affecting uh, the BDP of the country. So actually, uh, gains are like pretty big uh, part of like Pol Polish export, mm -hmm. and then uh, actually CD Project is like more than half of the whole uh, market in terms of income. Like, mm -hmm. like rec just recently, like CD Project was like on on the stock market become like the uh, the most uh, valuable company in the whole Polish stock market, which is like crazy, like a com company that's like hiring like one like thousand people, like it's valuable more like on stock, which is obviously not necessarily directly uh, related how like like it's the stock stock uh, value is kind of like a weird concept for me, which is like yeah. maybe, probably I don't even uh, understand. Uh, that much, like I, I'm just basically doing art. So, like, if I would understand uh, stocks, probably I would like do that. Uh, uh, I think, in my, from from my opinion, like stock market is just like uh, uh, <laughs> invented. Yeah, like people, people people are buying the promise of the yeah, future future value. Like that's that's why like all of the tech tech companies are like they're never they're uh, never buying the actual value. But then again, uh, it can also uh, ruin the business, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, so let's talk a bit about uh, your involvement in the in the uh, upcoming IFCC. Uh, I will just say that. Uh, Marek is uh, one of, I think, at this point we have almost sixty uh, people on the on the list, and our plan was for this online edition because since the live real life edition won't happen, uh, which had some limit to I think twenty or twenty four uh, speakers or instructors and demo artists, uh, the plan for the online uh, version was up to i don't know like 40 and that was like already too much but then we somehow we ended up on 60 at the moment and, and it's uh, still growing yeah and it's still growing and uh, now we have problems stopping it but you know uh, i'm just waiting for a few more guys and girls to you know confirm and that will be it and uh, it looks that you know it might uh, go up to 70 so uh, but uh, we'll see and uh, this is like a huge challenge for us because uh, almost everyone will be uh, presented in a you know in a, in a different way and uh, so yeah it's a big technical challenge as well but you know I hope I expect expect problems we expect problems but then again I also believe it will be you know one of the kind experience uh, the first one at this scale and uh, i hope uh, that will also inspire other 
other events you know to uh, to go in that direction and uh, even mix uh, uh, you know live and online thing and recently we had like just two days ago there was a fantastic they were breaking the ice the, the fantastic experience uh, uh, with uh, we are playgrounds yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I actually I was I was doing the uh, portfolio reviews on oh that really thing. I haven't yeah. noticed um, because I yeah, because know. that was that was not the main. Uh, uh -huh, there okay. were like two streams, and then that was like mm -hmm, a, mm -hmm. just one hour and four spots of like fifteen minutes portfolio reviews. Yeah, I think I think that the, that event went flawlessly, and uh, uh, so uh, it was. I mean, in such a short time, they did such a good production of it. You know, everything just worked well, and uh, the lineup was amazing. And uh, it was really interesting for me, you know, because we are doing something very similar. Uh, we have a, a more time, but we have also like a, a lot smaller team. So I hope this will this month follow up will be enough to you know to 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 reach that level at least at least at seventy percent, you know. So when it comes to production and del deliverability of of things, but anyway. Uh, what I wanted to say that uh, Marek uh, is uh, one of the artists who will be um, uh, involved the most because he's. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't know if it's like gonna be like the most, but. But uh, I, individually, I think it will. You know, but we'll see. You know, uh, but uh, I will. This is what I wanted to ask you, like, uh, what are your thoughts at, at the moment? Uh, what are you planning, if you can elaborate a bit? Okay. I will try not to interrupt, for which I'm very, very famous for. So <laughs> Yeah, okay, so, like, just to, so it's it's going to be, like, some kind of a, like announcements of, like, what, what I'm going to, what's going to be my involvement during, like, uh, IFCC. So, my idea was, uh, like, my original idea for IFCC, uh, when it was supposed to be a live event, was to talk about Cyberpunk, obviously, but because like the release date of the game was moved, I I cannot talk about uh, the, the project, which would be probably like the most interesting thing, and then uh, what people would like to hear the most. Uh, I have some ideas what I could like talk about, but I don't think that they are like uh the whole knowledge that i could share on that one hour video would be like that much interesting so i decided that maybe the best part from uh my side what i could do was to uh do some kind of like mentorships mm -hmm. obviously it's uh we cannot do it for everybody uh so the the spots are going to be like limited Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I want to do like something that's not gonna be super fast. I want to like spend uh, at least one hour with every person. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, here comes like the the tough decision of like, actually picking up. I, I don't know how many people are even gonna be interested, but mm -hmm. like uh, if there's gonna be like mm, more people interested in the uh, the mentorship, we obviously will need to. Uh, pick some some people for for it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the whole idea is like there is like four spots of like one hour sessions uh, where we could talk about art, how to improve it. And uh, my idea for picking up who uh, like picking up portfolios for or like people for those mentorships is that I will. Uh, I guess like you should send. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, your portfolio mm -hmm. to IFCC mm -hmm. uh, with a, like one sentence uh, why you would like mm, mentorship with me because like sometimes like oh, uh, obviously I'm gonna be deciding uh, I'm gonna be picking people that I, I think I might help the most uh, and because of that like that sentence might be helpful because like sometimes you might have mostly environments mm -hmm. in your portfolio and if you want to improve your characters without that knowledge i, I wouldn't know that so like i might uh, not pick you uh, for the mentorship so mm -hmm. that's why mm -hmm. that additional 
information about you is going to be helpful for me to actually uh, pick the right people for, for the mentorship. Cool. So, in, in other words, you, you won't... Uh, uh, maybe that's too hard to say waste time but you don't you won't waste their time if they're not the the right uh, 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 pick for what you can teach like in, in, in general you know like I, I think that like mentorships like it's it's not necessarily also about like just ha having a mentorship with somebody that's like totally better than you like sometimes even like conversation about your art with people peers that's uh, at similar skill level might be helpful because they might have different perception of your art mm -hmm. or like some other ideas so like in general talking about uh, your stuff with with friends like that are interested in the same thing it's actually helpful and, and no not everybody has the especially when they are learning not everybody has the chance to have the chance to uh, have friends that can they talk to because I think that's like even though like connecting to people now like through Facebook is easier than it used to be I think that there is like some kind of lack of actually conversation conversations on the internet about you know, what people are doing like people are posting art now but it's not about having discussion how to improve it or like uh, where to push it or like if it's good or not it's just about posting it and then getting people to see it Mm -hmm. getting some likes and that's it like when i was starting like a, a big, big factor for me to actually improve and learn what i'm doing now was actually uh forums uh, like one of the forums that like i was actually when i was starting uh, when i was like 16 or something like uh, there is this polish forum that's like called uh, max3d.pl uh, mm -hmm. and then every every almost everybody that I know that I started working at least 10 years ago mm -hmm. uh, actually was on that forum. Like a lot of my friends from the industry, actually, I met through that forum. And then uh, I also got a lot of help through that forum. And then because of the internet dynamics are changing, like forums are actually dying. Everybody just uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. There are groups, but then I, I don't think that they are actually working as good as uh, the forums used to. Uh, so i don't know like i i think that's like any kind of um, like on the other hand like you have like better access now to online teaching which yeah, like yeah, I, I didn't have i mean we are on our side we have also built a um, online platform for education and this is uh, this is i think this was my dream even before the IFCC event, uh, but you know, from technical aspect, we just weren't pr prepared for it, you know. So uh, uh, until we were able to build it our, ourselves, we didn't even start building it. So, uh, but now it's working, and uh, it's like a living organism, you know. You constantly adapt uh, the, the the ways of communication. So, uh, so it uh, it's it's really. It's really hard to you know uh, stick to one solution you know so it's it's like you know we started also like maybe it should be integrate forum you know yeah so in the end we uh, opted for discord you know but uh, there are also uh, other solutions are out there uh, so but you know discord uh, works pretty well and uh, uh, for for this kind of things because you can separate you know, you can separate in different channels, uh, yeah, yeah. voice channel, text channel, and so on. And the the before mentioned the uh, um, playgrounds uh, prove that it can also work for the uh, for the for the events. So uh, we'll see how that goes uh, for us. But uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, yeah, it's it, it's hard to pick the right. Uh, I, I I've even seen some. Uh, uh some uh, tries to to do like uh, uh to relive some old forums uh with the new technology but uh i don't think if that if that go, uh, go uh, did go well or not so uh but yeah so uh, tell me one thing uh 
you uh, so you said like you're you've been uh, working eight years uh, in the in the in the company. Uh, yeah. Did you have did you have some uh, internal training there? Uh, for example, did the company ever organize some kind of workshops for you guys to, you know, improve your uh, your skills? So, for example, the mentoring that you're yeah. offering now, did you ever go through that inside? Uh, yeah, company? yeah, yeah. Like we, uh, the thing is, uh, uh, we like the company is like, especially now, it's like like having uh, more of that kind of stuff. These days, like uh, last year, I think we had like the um, workshops with uh, Jama Jubarayev mm-hmm. that like I was taking part of. Uh, we actually, I wasn't on those ones because I was not in the studio, but like we had like uh, workshops with Nathan Folks. Uh, so we have like workshops. We also had like uh, the time period where uh, like once a month, uh, we had like a, a live drawing sessions that like during the day uh, of work. So uh, we were like just drawing like a model. And also like uh, also there were like uh, drawing sessions that like you could uh, uh, come to after after hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, or like the the draw like drawing was like the other the, every other week. I don't I don't remember much because like it also also was depending on like you know sometimes people decided to actually not go to those like drawing sessions because they they wanted to work on uh, some stuff related to the project obviously. Mm-hmm. But and uh, Promised Land is also like part of the uh, like company's workshops because like mm-hmm. uh, CD project is actually. Uh, uh, funding the the event mm-hmm. in a big part uh, mm-hmm. like the whole art department uh, is going to the promised land that's why because of, because of that like a huge part of people on, on during promised land is, is actually from CD project I mean that definitely makes sense and uh, now that you touch that uh, I really don't understand uh, companies that are not sending their people to you know, to the events, especially, uh, uh, I know that Promised Land is pretty focused on kind of a workshop approach. Uh, there aren't, I mean, from I have never been, but uh, to from what I've seen, there are a lot of uh, sessions that are actually kind of a workshop sessions. So correct me uh, if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, but the, you know, like the the main problem with workshops is that like they they usually. If he wants to do something that actually works like workshop, uh, the, the 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 spots like they will be limited because, for example, you need PCs. Like we trying, we are trying to provide as many as much equipment as we can. But like it's also like problem of like you know if you want to give feedback as an instructor, it's also like there is a limited amount of people that you can like go through, uh, and. Uh, so like workshops are like if you you know like presentations are great but uh people also like uh it but they are more like uh they're working like a bit different in different way they're like more like most of the time they're kind of like motivational or like just to uh check what your experience are regarding like certain topics or like to uh hear like interesting stuff like most of it like sometimes you will get like insightful knowledge and then some something useful but like workshops are usually something that's like le- letting you learn more uh, yeah. where you actually getting feedback from the instructor and uh, because like you when you just listen and like you, you know like when you think about like learning uh, you 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 can't expect like for example uh, learn how to play basketball mm-hmm. just by watching it mm-hmm. uh, so uh, if you want to learn how to draw, you you might actually watch some videos that they're gonna like motivate you. But without actual making some drawings, um, it's hard to learn something. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, uh, maybe like it's more complicated topic because like obviously there are like things that like letting you improve your drawings a, mm-hmm. uh, a lot without actually like when you actually understand perspective, which you probably can understand without actually drawing perspective. Uh, it's probably easier to understand it while drawing, mm-hmm. but like, 
And I, I know from my experience, I was uh, forcing myself through the years to learn, you know, everything on my own. And then uh, to that point that uh, I was actually refusing to, you know, uh, go to any kind of uh, workshops or anything like that. But then just by observing uh, the things that we, the situation we had on our event and seeing, you know, how people can improve in a short period of time, you know, uh, you know, makes you change your mind uh, on that topic. So, uh, uh, tell me, please. Uh, so, uh, I know that recently one of my favorite concept artists, who is mostly involved uh, in three D, uh, doing sci fi stuff, but also other uh, Fourier Tedeschi, he also uh, uh, joined uh, the CD project. He's he's still there, right? Yeah, you know, like obviously the problematic part is that like everywhere there is like coronavirus, mm-hmm. and then uh, we are working remotely, so uh, everybody is at home. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, but you guys are actually yeah. sitting very close in. Uh, yeah, yeah, like we, on the studio, we are sitting in the same room. Uh, so you know, having someone like that next to you. Uh, and I know that he's like uh, uh, his work is more uh, uh, around the 3D techniques, uh, and then later on he probably does uh, some paint overs and, and whatnot. But uh, how does this influence your work? So you know, did I mean, uh, did you did you start with also with the 3D and then, or did you actually, start? The thing is. Uh... Uh, since I started working on Cyberpunk, the uh, the main topic that like we were struggling with was designing more technical stuff, and mm-hmm. then uh, we realized that using 3D uh, during designing those those topics is like basically fundamental. Like sometimes uh, translating something from just 2D concept to 3D functional design was problematic mm-hmm. uh, especially from this transition from 2d to uh, 3d mm-hmm. and then uh, so we realized like i basically started using a lot of 3d and like mainly zbrush uh, even like uh, way before actually fourier joined the uh, so uh, like everybody probably knows like Fourier's work uh, he's great like he was also like great addition to the team and then like uh, also like um, like gave, gave us like lots of motivation to work uh, but like at, at, at some point like uh, basically my my way of working especially on that because my stuff on art station is like uh, mostly from from the Witcher, people like uh, knows me probably as the Witcher guy. Uh, but I also like I'm, I'm basically do, like working on characters and then some uh, cyberware designs and uh, other things related to cyberpunk now. And then uh, I had to like maybe I didn't have to learn, but like I I basically realized that uh, my uh, like I I like working in ZBrush a lot it, because it feels uh, it feels like very good tool for uh, for concepting mm-hmm. uh, because like when you're drawing, you actually need to know uh, what you want to like. You need to understand certain uh, certain things, and you're focusing on how to draw like a good form and how to uh, draw the, the thing so it's gonna be uh, very clear and understandable. And then when you're working in ZBrush. That that part of actually, for example, like rendering 3D, like the the, the volume of the uh, the shape, it's mm-hmm. like I don't have to think about it. And so, uh, like ZBrush is giving me a lot of tools that are actually helping me be faster, uh, probably designing basically, yeah. making me like more effective. Obviously, in certain topics, because if I would need to uh, do like a character that's like mainly fabrics, like ZBrush might be not the best option, uh, but I, I really like the uh, the software, and then like if and then I like if somebody like was thinking about like actually starting using it, like I, I really recommend it. Yeah, ZBrush is uh, definitely great. It's also the soft. I think that was the my first three D tool that I kind of uh, stayed in for a while, 
and uh, the only problem is that I haven't finished like 99% uh, of the sculpt I started because uh, very often I would go without any concept inside and just you know spend three days inside of the interface and you know and then just stopped doing it and moved to something else because there was of course uh, there wasn't a project that I was working on it was just like you know uh, trying to learn stuff but uh, yeah and then uh, you know there's Furio you know who's like a, a madman in, in ZBrush and then uh, uh, on the other hand you mentioned like Jama uh, who's also with us a lot of times as well and he's also some sort of a uh, you know software junkie alien who just changes stuff and then yeah. brings it to the to the to the next level so uh, yeah like our, our workshops like in the studio were like were mainly about like basically what he does his magic in blender like yeah, and how yeah. he like works in vr and that kind of, like basically also like also uh, sold me on like buying vr set and uh -huh. trying uh design design on in, in vr which mm -hmm. actually a bunch of people recommended me but mm -hmm. so uh, like so you know like mentioning all these different skills and software so where are you now with it so what's your uh you know maybe on the current project that you're working like what's your tool set for this uh it's mainly like photoshop zbrush keyshot uh mm -hmm. Sometimes I need to use like some other software. Like a couple of times I had to use like DDS Max uh, for animation, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, I was trying to like show the animations in ZBrush, but it's like not the best tool for that. Uh, yeah, like I'm trying to learn Blender now, but also like it's like, kind of like a slow process for me because mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I'm I'm not spending enough time uh, in that software uh, uh, but I, I'm I'm trying to push it a bit further like I also like really realized uh, how cool tool is uh, like, the, like basically you know, game engines like Unreal for mm -hmm. prototyping certain things and preparing maybe block out because they, they also have like great tools in terms of uh, uh, real-time rendering uh, because like mainly like uh, what what's pretty cool in Blender is actually EV. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people are using Octane. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't uh, have a chance to actually try it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but... I mean, this is funny, uh, an interesting topic because since you know, uh, quite often I'm in contact with the representatives of various uh, software companies because you know we either need them. Uh, uh, for their licenses when we're doing doing some uh, mm -hmm. uh, challenges that we did more in the past than in recent years but uh, but also you know trying to convince them you know join the IFCC as a sponsor that kind of stuff then we you know we have some talks about the future of the software and uh, I'm always trying to explain them how uh, actually concept artists are affecting the uh, the the industry of their dedicated software which are maybe only for you know were built for rendering uh, uh, product shots, you know, but uh, <laughs> then, you know, a lot, for example, Keyshot is a good example because uh, it's definitely not uh, intended for a uh, concept artist. But uh, yeah. the cool thing with but concept artists yeah. is that they need tools which can speed up their workflow and then, you know, make it uh, good looking, you know, and they can really affect the sales of a certain product developed by a company like Luxon, yeah. like other. And the thing is like, like with ZBrush, ZBrush has like a really nice, like licen licensing uh, model where you're just buying the license once and then, then they're updating it. Uh, you have like the every update for free. Mm -hmm. So everybody like, it's basically industry standard in terms of like modeling, especially characters and other things. So everybody that's uh, like, it's pretty like the amount of people that they could sell that product to. It's like, that was like limited. Like it's growing because there are new people that right? are learning mm -hmm. the, uh, like, and they want to like start working in the game industry, but, uh, to actually grow, uh, as a company, ZBrush, uh, like had to, search for new audience and then mm -hmm. like concept design and concept art was in general like was those people that's like they they improved a lot uh it's like 
ZBrush is like way more access like uh, accessible now. Like I tried when before I actually started using ZBrush, I had like at least three or four tries because the user interface is not necessarily that intuitive, and it's pretty. It's uh, different. It's the the learning different. curve is like uh, it's it's not like not the best, but. Uh, yeah, by the way, like I just noticed that there is like a question regarding mentorship on yeah, the on yeah. the chat. Yeah, so I, I, I just, uh, I just uh, sent uh, the the first step uh, subscribe to FCC newsletter because we'll be sending updates about it uh, through there as well or or first there. But you can you can uh, just repeat what you said already. So. Yeah, but I also like I didn't probably say like how it's gonna look like. So mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be probably like uh, that's the thing. Like it's gonna be like one on one uh, one hour session mm -hmm. where I'm like probably on Google Hangout or something like that uh, where uh, I could have like I could share the screen and then do some notes or overpaints on core work uh we can also like just talk about certain things if you're gonna have like questions or like certain topics uh, uh it, it's basically uh depending also to you like so if you have like some kind of uh informations how you would like uh the mentorships to look like uh just send the uh, send those notes with the submission so i would actually uh, know what you actually expecting. Mm -hmm. uh, I will just add I, it will probably do a specified uh, 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 form yeah. for those who want to join the mentorship, which will have like all the all the fields for all the necessary da data that you will require. Maybe you think of something else that you need to know the info from the those who are interested. So we'll prepare that for sure. So. Uh, Uh, yeah, please continue. Sorry, I I, I, I just interrupt. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Like, uh, I hope that uh, that was actually answer for the question. I think more than enough. Uh, so let me just check. I have prepared some more, uh, uh, but w w we were talking about all these, you know, ways of uh, tools and all yeah, ways yeah, of work. So I mean, uh, how because, since you're working on something so huge and, and uh, important uh, for the company, so how much time do you actually have left to, you know, learn new techniques on the side? Because uh, you, you know, like that's that's the thing, like. Uh, uh, if you want, like you can find a lot. Like the, obviously, like everybody has like different situation. Most of like, uh, I have like those moments where I'm actually not doing anything except like I'm just spending like these eight hours or like nine, like eight hours at work. I'm coming back home and then just like I just want to play games and then I'm, I'm not actually. Maybe I will just do like a sketch or two in my sketchbook and I'm not doing anything. Uh, specific regarding like learning uh, but uh, and then, then, then on the other hand like i have those also moments where i could spend like just the whole free time like even like forgetting out my girlfriend sometimes and just like spending eight hours on uh like learning something uh, but also like even in during those times i like i also feel like i'm, I'm just lazy and i'm not doing enough especially that's like i think that's a problem when you actually looking uh, like you following like Facebook or like ArtStation and you see all of that stuff that like people are posting and then you, you feel like they are doing way more. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I guess also that's the problem of working in the like long uh, project that like working on, I worked on, on The Witcher for example like three and a half years mm -hmm. and then uh, there are people that like freelancers and they are like posting and during that time they work on like a bunch of projects and like you feel like uh they're doing like way more than you do uh, but like uh, obviously the the way people, like you work on the project in the studio and you work on freelance is a bit different because like in the studio for example like uh one part of the job is like painting pictures and doing like designs and providing it but then also there is like a huge part of the concept art position 
in the studio is also like helping the the rest of the team so like sometimes there are problems regarding the uh design because like something there are, there are some technical limitations regarding the uh, the character that you design and like certain stuff will not look necessarily really like good but because of the simulations gonna uh, be crappy so like sometimes you need to figure out how to make the character still look good but like avoid certain problems or mm -hmm. sometimes you need to do additional overpaints or additional you need to provide additional uh, references or um, like all sorts of things that like you're doing in the studio like as a freelancer you not necessarily dealing with that that much like uh, sometimes like for example like uh, i had like a, some uh like time period when i'm actually even worked in the engine so which mm -hmm. like uh, as a concept artist that I'm doing that stuff like probably like concept artists like they're not expecting to do like all sort of things like, regarding like the, the game mm -hmm. but like sometimes this happens like especially if you like working in the small team uh, like you might even like sometimes need to do some like, game design for example like and it's like obviously not everybody would like that like for me learning all sorts of things it's like a cool uh uh, cool thing i want to learn as much as i can and like different and different things like that's maybe that's also my problem because I, i'm not focusing on one thing and mm -hmm. i i like for example i did like workshops in uh making clothes like uh, i bought like tattoo machine and i was trying also that like uh i like recently i realized that like maybe oh maybe i will like learn something about the like making games in unreal like and sounds so uh, familiar yeah, so uh, I'm that kind of person. I like to do like all sorts of things to check if I like them or not. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm just like most of the time I'm going back to to drawing and painting. Like, but mm -hmm. recently I'm actually probably more into like working in ZBrush and actually painting stuff from scratch. Like, I I love sketching for like the initial ideas, and I I I, uh, I like to create like nice images, but I'm not into like being like a uh, process purist where I'm just focusing on like being like the best craftsman in terms of drawing. I just want to use all of the tools that I can to actually create something that uh, looks cool. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me, from yep. since you started uh, working or even before that, where you when you were like uh, thinking about working as an artist for you know your monthly income, uh which artist which artist who was there before you or who you met later on at the event or you know or even have his or her book who influenced you uh the most or who who left the biggest mark in your either you know thoughts or even uh, affect the the uh, how you work uh, how you do your art you know, like uh, on on that way, there was like a lot of people probably mm -hmm. like the, and then uh, depending on like moments, it, the 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 names were changing. Like I, I like still remember when I uh, I was playing Icewind Dale, and then that game had like some intro uh, done by Justin Sweet and Vance Kovacs. Okay. And back then, I didn't know what is digital painting or whatever, and then. I saw some of the pictures there, and then I was like, "How they made the, made those like white strokes?" And then like late, year, years later, I actually realized that that was like a lot of that stuff that was actually uh, done in Photoshop. Uh, and uh, I actually uh, back their uh, Kickstarter project, like Eclipse, like they did like a uh, art book, uh, and I had I have the original drawings from them in that book mm -hmm. uh I, like a huge influence from uh, for me was also like ian mccake which mm -hmm. i met uh in romania during the behind the iron curtain event that oh, was yeah, like that eight was the, years ago yeah that was the, uh, the event i don't know much about but i know that it was before all the other new generation events it, it was uh as much as i know it was like the, the only two editions of it uh the first one was like way bigger and then uh it was like it started like a year after 
my first event that I ever uh, participate to. It was like because the first event that I, I was uh, I went to was actually called uh, Made. It was organized by Marco Djurjevic uh, oh. in Berlin, mm -hmm. and there was like a bunch of guys from uh, Massive Black. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was like pretty small. I, I think like on the whole event there was like around like 100 people. Mm -hmm. It was happening in Berlin something around like probably 10 years ago or nine uh, so ages ago in, in terms of the uh, industry and then behind the iron curtain was the the next year uh, and it, it was happening in uh, Romania and it was like uh, organized by a guy like the, that was called like Ian Dumitrescu or something like that mm -hmm. yeah I remember I remember her uh hearing about it uh, uh, I even saw some photos from it but uh, I know that it's uh, it was cons I mean because I met some guy guys who, who uh, at the first IFCC who were there as well uh, and then they, uh, they they said like that it was kind of probably the that's why I say like uh, the first of these new generation events which include THU and the IFCC and industry workshop and then promised land and uh, playgrounds and so on so um, yeah uh, so huh, I think I mean we we'll, we'll covered uh, uh, most of it uh, so uh, not sure if you have any 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 uh, any thoughts uh, additional thoughts uh, that you would want to share uh, maybe some future plans uh, uh, your do, are you working on any personal projects, uh, artistic uh, one or not? I see uh, another question on the uh -huh. chat now. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm see, I, I see another question on the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. Red Flag is asking like, uh, if I'm using 3D models or uh, scenes to plan paintings or paint over. Also, if I were working from home or a 3D project. Yeah, so uh, we were actually, uh, regarding like some of that stuff, we were like talking about them before. like. Normally, I'm I'm working uh, in house in the studio. I'm coming to work like every day. Uh, but nowadays, like now because of coronavirus, I'm I'm working from home. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, also like I'm I'm using 3D, like uh, not for every picture that I'm doing, but like uh, when I'm doing like technical uh, stuff. Uh, I'm probably like most likely gonna use 3D for that. Uh, like also for my personal stuff, like I, I, I like to use some kind of blockout because it helps me with uh, with light. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm just overpainting it. Uh, Any suggestion of uh, maybe literature, you know, about uh, you know. Uh about how uh, how to frame your uh, 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 scene or, uh, uh, or or any, anything in that in that uh, sense you know that this like everybody is just like coming with this like a uh, title that's called like framing uh, by um, Marcos uh, my, mm -hmm. I don't remember the name correctly so I don't want to like butcher it or something yeah, he has, like, the... but it's like basically it's called framing uh, so in it's more mostly about like the comic art and then uh, storyboarding and how to like tell stories uh, in frames. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the name yeah. is Marcos Matthew Mestre. Mestre. Oh, I also uh, pronounce it wrong, but uh, he is, he has like few books like Framed Ink, Framed Perspective, and uh, something third has come out recently. So uh, amazing guy. Uh, I have like two of his books, uh, really amazing content. Uh, yeah, just search for like Framed Ink and you'll find uh, all the others uh, on Amazon or wherever. Uh, so mm, if there are no other questions, because like we're streaming on few, few location at the same time, so I'm checking here on, uh, on my uh, Facebook profile to see if anything left, I don't left anything uh, here, but it doesn't seem that we have any additional questions here. Uh, YouTube. I'm saying w one more, like w what inspires me these days. Ah, this is the YouTube. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, so it's like 
to be honest, like lots of things, like obviously, like uh, like a lot of people, like, and I'm probably uh, influenced by by games and movies a lot. But I'm trying to go for different um, inspirations. Like I'm I'm uh, I'm interested in literally everything, like uh, uh, from um, paleontology. To, like when I, I still remember when I was like in primary school and I was like into dinosaurs a lot like that was how I actually started drawing probably I, I saw like Jurassic Park in like the trailer in TV and I wanted to like recreate the scene from the trailer uh, when there was like a, a lot lots of like ichthyodons or like some sort of like uh, vegetarian dinosaurs that like looking like a uh big bird <laughs> and then like i didn't dinosaurs. i didn't have the two the, the toys so i just drew a lot lots of dinosaurs like uh, and then i started playing with them and recreate the the scene uh i'm like uh i like to like read about like history for example like that that was something that i didn't appreciate enough when i was in school but like now i'm like coming back to it and then like because like history is uh full of like great stories and ideas for example like i have this like awesome book about gladiators and mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of information about like how the the whole entertainment in the the thing was actually designed that it wasn't like just random that they they put a bunch of guys into the pit and then they were fighting uh, they were like well-trained fighters it would be like more like more, uh, like UFC now, mm -hmm. which is more about the entertainment, and then all of the the fighters there they were like inspired by, for example, there was like a I don't remember names now, but one of the gladiators type was inspired uh, by fish, and the other one uh, as a fisherman, and they were like and he was using the trident and net, and then they were like fighting uh, against each other, and just uh, and it was just that like. There were these, these like the the elements of their equipment was designed specifically for the fight uh, that it would be bloody but not dangerous for the gladiator mm -hmm. because uh, training the gladiator was like pretty expensive yeah, yeah, yeah. apparently so they were like uh, obviously like there were situations where uh, they were dying but for that kind of situation somebody wealthy had to actually pay, pay for, for that yeah. Yeah. so it wasn't happening uh, very often but then in that book also i read that there was like a amazing story about some slaves that actually escaped from mm -hmm. uh the like because that was the best like there's there was also like a sad part of like basically killing slaves in the, those pits yeah. which was obviously not not good but some of them are um, like were like very popular like the stars like, uh, like, like, like the, the, the gladiators, thing. yes, but yeah. then the like, uh, all other stuff. But there was like I, I like I read about this story in that book that there was uh, one dude that would actually escape. Mm -hmm. uh, he found uh, a lion in the desert. Mm -hmm. The lion was uh, wounded. He helped the lion, and somehow later on, they catch the slave again and then put it into the pit and then against like it was also very common that they were like throwing people like to be killed by wild animals mm -hmm. and it happened that like the he was thrown into that pit with that lion and that lion didn't kill him mm. and it was like uh, they were apparently uh, later on as stars i don't know if it's a, like legend yeah, or, like, yeah, came yeah. Up story, but uh, sounds it, pretty it's not it's not amazing. like you, you can find a documentary from that time or, or the footage but uh... well man, like, there, there are like lots of like crazy stories yeah. like uh, this uh, for example bear in like polish army during the second world war that actually was uh, uh it was bear wojtek or uh, i think oh I, i've Wojtek. seen i've seen uh, yeah. just recently i found on somewhere on wikipedia or somewhere or the video about that bear that, that's like totally amazing story and actually he was a part of military he's uh he was like a caporal or something That's he was totally helping, crazy story. And helping then, like then... Uh, transport to transport ammo during monte casino <laughs> apparently like he was also like apparently drinking beer and stuff I, i'm i'm uh i'm pretty uh, surprised that there isn't like a hollywood well, film yeah. about his situation i mean this is so bizarre at the same time yeah. and and i remember then 
I think English uh, or whoever you know when the armies joined they kind of they wanted to sc uh, screw up the situation with the bear because like an animal can't be a uh, carpal or, or whatever you know in, in no the, no there was like the, there was a case that, uh, in Polish army uh, they could they couldn't have a pet so uh -huh. because, uh, because so they of that, they, the they, they gave him like uh, official <laughs> uh, position in yeah. the army yeah. yeah yeah that's great I mean that's that's fantastic but when you met you mentioned gladiators and this is something a bit you know not so related uh, I mean it is related it's more about the stadiums uh, and I saw I saw something so amazing uh, I think it was actually on History Channel, but uh, they did a simulation for the uh, for the Colosseum yeah. uh, and compared it to the uh, and this has more to do with the architecture and they compared it to the bird's nest in China uh, for the last Olympics there. I think it was pro built for the Olympics, the famous famous stadium, stadium by famous uh, architect. And they, they did a simulation because the capacity of people uh, is pretty similar, you know. Uh, okay. And then they did a situation uh, how fast, you know, when the show is over, uh, how fast uh, uh, the stadium, uh, you know, uh, how fast do people go out of the stadium, like all of them. And the simulation showed uh, that uh, actually uh, the Colosseum was, you know, in that sense, uh, was uh, a, a better architectural solution. Pe people would leave the stadium faster than they would in uh, uh, in the in this uh, fantastic modern uh, uh, modern stadium, the Bird's Nest in China. Which uh, and the architect was part of this show, and he was like really amazed when we saw when he saw the results. So yeah, there's a lot of things that we don't know from you know from those times. Uh, which are pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, that there are no. If you, I don't know. If you, did you notice any, 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 any more questions? Because uh, I, no, I think it, that's that's all. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so everyone, uh, please join us in a, in a month uh, for the uh, for the IFCC. Uh, Marek uh, will, you know played the important role in it so we will inform you through our newsletter okay, and... like one la last uh, question so maybe i will like reply to it fast uh -huh, what is your okay. advice to junior concept artists what should uh -huh, we focus okay. more in our portfolio to make a good impression on the like recruiters uh, i guess like not, like in the past it was like more about mostly about like pretty pictures like presenting that you can like paint very well and I, I think like nowadays it's more about actually showing your thought process how, like how you can like uh, come up with the uh, ideas because like at the end of the day like when you're actually working in the studio for example like the 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 quality of like rendering it's not that important sometimes like obviously it can help with like selling the idea but it's mostly about uh the uh, the like like the nice design that like uh, gonna be looking good in the uh, final product, not necessarily on the sketch, uh, and that's like what I'm seeing like uh, a lot in like the like beginners portfolios that a lot of people are just focusing on like rendering and like mm, doing nice pictures part, and they are not trying to push uh, this ideas part like in showing the, the process so i would say that's like the uh the thing that's like the most crucial part of the good concept art portfolio okay yes are we we'll, i'll wait for another five seconds to you know for any new questions yeah, but I, I, I guess like uh I guess we, we covered like all of the stuff that we were discussed before that I think so talk about. Uh, I think if you remember anything else uh, I mean I don't have to go anywhere so we can stay here for another hour but you know yeah, I, but on the other hand I need to do some groceries so yeah I, I suppose you have something to do uh, so yeah so also like if somebody will have like some questions later underneath you can leave them underneath the, the video i will like probably 
check it, check it yeah. uh, at least for a couple of days and I will try to uh, reply. Uh, yeah, and also I'll, I'll, I'll let you know if you miss something because as I said, like we, we're streaming, we're testing actually. These, these, are, these interviews are also a test for us to see if everything works with the streaming. <clears throat> I think like in the last 10 interviews I did, I think this is the one with the least problems. Uh, so uh, good job on that. Um, yeah, so as I said, uh, join us on 25th of May, uh, IFCC online this time with uh, <laughs> it looks like it will be more than 60 uh, uh, speakers instructors and demo artists Marek will be there he'll he already said he'll be doing uh, uh, his mentoring pro program during uh, IFCC program and will inform you how to apply uh, <clears throat> it will be like a smooth process of course and then uh, the thing is that you know he can't he can't do it for everyone he'll pick uh, uh, the artist that you know uh, he thinks that he can help the most and spend a good amount of time with them during uh, the event and we'll also let you know how will that work uh, where you have to you know log in or whatever um, so uh, uh, so definitely join us uh, I know I wanted to say something else but I think I, uh, uh, I, I forgot it uh, not sure what it was anymore never mind uh so yeah uh mark thanks a lot uh thank for your time no thanks problem for your time. Th thanks for yeah. having me of course always uh and uh and thanks to, thank you guys for watching yeah of course like thanks to everyone who joined especially those who were asking questions this also helps us to to make it more interesting for everyone who are watching or, or will be watching in the future and yes and if you have any questions about the ifcc how will this uh, you know function the whole event like huge amount of people six days uh, uh you know send send us a, or either either use the form uh, on our website or you know leave a comment below or whatever and uh, you know we'll be with you soon so yeah that that's it uh, i think i'll stop streaming now uh in yeah. in in three two one